Okay, thank you. Can I share the screen? Uh, yes, sir, you can share the screen. Meanwhile, I request all participants to stay muted and speak whenever you have uh, doubts or you can uh, give your questions in chat. We can administer during the session and we will be having a discussion round following it. So then you can ask your questions. So still then request all participants to stay muted. Uh, sir, it's over to you. You can start, sir. Yeah. Uh, am I audible? Yes, sir, you are audible. And my screen is visible for you. Yes, I it is. So today, uh, in the next uh, half an hour, I'll be talking about an introduction to palliative. What is palliative care? Palliative care has become such a commonplace word, but still there are a lot of misconceptions regarding palliative care. So we should get a clarity about the term, what is palliative care? First of all, we uh, discuss it in these terms, the need, why palliative care, and then the history, and what is the philosophy of the care, philosophy of palliative care, and how we are going to define palliative care. Regarding the need, patients usually uh, experience an illness experience. That's what the patient is feeling, he's ill. Uh, it has got a lot of ramifications, physical, social, psychological, spiritual, and all. But the medical fraternity sees this uh, illness experience only as a disease. They are more uh, interested in diagnosing a particular disease and which they uh, think that that is the cause of the illness experience. And when once the disease is cured, the illness experience will vanish. That's the usual uh, medical model we follow. So th this sort of medical model has a lot of issues. There is one, one thing is that when the disease, uh, when we focus on the disease, when the disease cannot be cured, the physician loses interest in the patient because whatever he is planning only is to uh, relieve the, uh, the, the disease. And if the disease cannot be cured, the, uh, they abandon the patient. They don't uh, want to do anything more for the patient. And another thing is that in the disease-focused approach, uh, doctors see the symptoms only as a signpost to, uh, for the diagnosis of a particular disease. So uh, any, even, even pain is not addressed properly. Because they think that when once the disease is cured, the pain will vanish. So they focus on the disease itself. And so uh, the patient uh, undergoes a lot of suffering. Now, regarding the uh, total pain experience the patient is suffering, it has got a lot of ramifications. As I said, there's a, there's a physical issue, the physical pain caused by the disease. And that leads to loss of employment, loss of income, and so social isolation. And so there are a lot of social issues underlying this uh, illness experience. And all this cause psychological issues. And along with that, the patient will have spiritual issues also. These are the, uh, the patient is having a total suffering. So in palliative care, we address the physical, social, psychological, and spiritual issues of the patient. So we call palliative care as a comprehensive care. That's what palliative care means. Palliative care is a treatment approach that addresses all the domains of the patient's illness experience, like physical, social, psychological, and spiritual. And regarding history, as a uh, compassionate care, palliative care has got a long history dating back to the period of Emperor Rashoda. But uh, palliative care, as we see it now, uh, as a specialty of uh, modern medicine, 
that came only in 1967 and we should not forget the name of the lady who uh, found this first uh, modern hospice that is called St. Christopher's Hospice in London. Hospice is a, uh, is a treatment center where uh, life uh, patients with uh, low life expectancy are taken care of almost towards end of life. They are seen in the uh, St. Christopher's Hospice. Uh, and then in 1974, a great doctor called Balfour Mount, he coined the term palliative care, palliative medicine. Uh, that is pallium in Latin word. Pallium is a Latin word, meaning to clock, to cover. So actually this palliative medicine, palliative care is a poetic expression. That is, when you can't cure the disease, you cover and protect the patient with a blanket of effective symptom control through comprehensive care. That's the meaning of palliative care. So it's a, it's a clock, it's a, it's a cover that protects the patient from the uh, distressing symptoms of the disease, which may not be able to be cured. So ultimately, what palliative care does is the improving the quality of life. Now, philosophy, uh, there's a uh, care philosophy for palliative care. That is uh, recognizing the other person, the recognizing the, the individual, recognizing the patient as a whole person. That is the main uh, thrust of the philosophy of palliative care. Uh, that is not something to be uh, spoken to the patient. It's not verbalized. It has to be expressed through our uh, facial expressions, body language, through our deeds, how we uh, regard these patients. If we put into words, that will, that will be something like that. This is given by uh, Cecily Saunders, who found the first modern hospice. You matter because you are you. You matter to the last moment of your life. And we will do all that we can, not only to help you die peacefully, but you live until you die. That's what she says. You matter because you are you. Each patient matters to us because they have a worth of their own. They are all unique individuals. Nobody can replace a particular patient. So uh, each and every person is important. So you matter because you are you. Just because he is a human being is important. You matter because you are. And you matter to the last moment of your life. And this importance stays there till his last breath. That means we are not, uh, we, we will do everything possible to make the patients uh, comfortable till his last moment. We will not, uh, we will not uh, uh, hesitate to give uh, medicines or treatments uh, thinking that the uh, life expectancy is short. Even if the patient is going to die tomorrow, we will do everything possible for that patient. Sometimes we may not give them IV fluids and all, but that's not because uh, that will be lost, that will be waste. No, we'll, we will not give IV fluids to the terminal patients, uh, understanding that that fluid is not going to help the patient and may cause harm. That's the only reason we hesitate to uh, give. Uh, treatment uh, to the uh, terminal patients. So they matter to the last moment of your life. And we will do all that we can, not only to help you die peacefully, but to live until you die. We will help, help them die comfortably, peacefully. But that is not the important thing. We focus on the life they are living until they die. So the uh, the, the problem we, uh, we see is not the death of the patient, but how they are going to live until they die. So we are making them, uh, making their life livable until they die. And sometimes, uh, and most of the times, palliative care is regarded as a charity, a charitable act. No, it is not a charitable act, actually. 
because it's a human right issue by virtue of being a human being we have a right to live without pain and suffering so uh, we are just addressing the well, uh, human right issue of each patient that is human rights was set leave a person in avoidable pain and suffering should be regarded as a serious breach of fundamental human rights so by virtue of being a human being we have a moral obligation to alleviate the suffering of our fellow human beings so uh, by uh, being politicer we are just doing this uh, human rights issue so now coming to definition this is this was the first definition of politicer in uh, world health organization coined this uh, definition 1990 Palliative care is the active total care of patients and their family at a time when the disease is no more responsive to curative treatment. Uh, this, is, this is something, this uh, definition is something uh, which has changed, uh, which is changed now. Uh, but there are still, there are uh, some useful points in this definition. That is, palliative care is the active. Why active? Because we are doing everything possible to make the patient comfortable uh, we are giving medicines we are addressing the psychosocial issues we are to, to enter into the life of the patient and the, the community and do whatever things uh, possible to make the patient comfortable so it's an active process and it's a total care by by uh, what does it mean by total total care is that we are addressing all the four spheres of human existence the physical social psychological and spiritual domains are addressed that is the total care so it's an active total care of patients and their family that's also important in mainstream medicine uh, the family is not given uh, such an uh, importance such importance because uh, the, the, the patient goes back to normal activity when one sees cured uh, so family is not that much distress as Uh, in palliative care, the patient suffering from incurable illness is not. The family also suffer along with the patient. So we, our caring unit is patient and family, not only patient. So palliative care is the active total care of patients and their family. At a time when the disease is no more responsive to curative treatment, that was the first uh, impression about palliative care. It is to be given when the disease. is pronounced to be incurable uh, now there is some in, uh, injustice in it because uh, the patient is diagnosed with cancer or long term illness he is uh, actually he is devastated because uh, 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 the the future is very bleak for for the such patients uh, and he is uh, worried Uh, with the physical issues social issues psychological issues and spiritual issues but the disease focused approach of the doctors uh, address uh, their agenda will be what sort of uh, cancer is this is it adenocarcinoma is it squamous cell carcinoma uh, whether uh, radiotherapy is good or chemotherapy should be done or should be uh, undertake a surgery for this patient that's all the agenda of the caring doctors but whereas the patient's agenda will be oh, what will happen to my family uh, what will happen if this pain is not subsided or how will they disfigure me uh, i am isolated in my uh, society that's all the patient's agenda now the doctors focusing on the disease uh, undertake all this uh, surgery chemo radiation and all and when once the at uh, the uh, uh, at the same time the patient will be suffering lot of uh, suffering due to psychosocial and spiritual issues now when the uh, disease is pronounced to be incurable then only palliative the, the next come button palliative care and the patient will be sent to palliative care then uh, things are different because in palliative care these patient, uh, people are seen by the volunteers in the community and they ask questions which were never asked uh, hitherto that is 
uh, how is uh, life going on uh, how, how is the uh, means uh, of uh, day, uh, daily activities going on how is the children's education going on so who is there to support you financial support where does it come this sort of relevant issues are asked only in the last part of his life so now we know that uh, these issues are these questions are were relevant in the early part of his illness itself so and that that last part has to be changed and so who defined into redefined to in 2002 as palliative care is an approach that improves the quality of life of patients and their relatives facing the problems associated with life threatening illness through the prevention and relief of suffering by means of early identification and impeccable assessment and treatment of pain and other problem, problems physical psychosocial and spiritual so this is the like uh, definition that is we have to uh, look into the symptoms as early as possible and uh, we, we should evaluate correctly and give proper medicines to relieve the suffering of the patient and thereby we improve the quality of life of patient so palliative care is a treatment approach that improves the quality of life of patient so now what we know that uh, palliative care is, is a comprehensive care addressing the physical social psychological and spiritual aspects and to qualify a particular patient for palliative care he need not have cancer or he need not have an incurable illness what or he uh, he should have is suffering so palliative care is something to be uh, is uh, used to address the suffering caused by serious health related suffering that is the present day <clears throat> understanding about palliative care wherever there is suffering and the, their uh, care should uh, should incorporate palliative care so that is that is the uh, uh, what is that factor that qualify a particular patient for palliative care the answer is suffering suffering caused by disease so any patients who is having suffering they should get palliative care it need not be incurable illness it may, the, uh, there should not be shortening of life expectancy etc only factor which qualify a patient for palliative care is suffering so this is uh, when the uh, disease is diagnosed there is this is modifying treatment it has more importance so this is the this is modifying treatment part at the same time we can give some supportive and palliative care and as the disease progress when the disease when the relevance of disease modifying uh, therapy fail the supportive and palliative care therapy increase so it is not a two compartments side by side it is a uh, it's a diagonal so we have to give palliative care along with uh, disease modifying and curative treatment and towards the end of life only palliative care and uh, with the uh, death of the patient uh, uh, our duty is not over we have to give them bereavement support bereavement support means it is the uh, when the patient dies uh, the relatives will feel uh, very sad they will feel abandoned they will feel uh, insecure in that uh, at that period we have to give them moral support and we have to identify whether their bereavement is uh, healthy or a normal physiological bereavement or is it pathological in that case we have to uh do some professional help from the catrice so this is me so this is the uh scenario we are all familiar with that is the patient and doctor the nurse side by side and the bystander standing a little apart because this is sufficient for a uh, normal purpose because they usually get cured they are back to normal except for half of the added financial burden which is they, they can repay go home and resume routine activities whereas you just think about the chronically and incurably ill patients what happens to the patient who needs regular attention for the rest of his or her life that 
uh, what happens to the patient with incurable cancer after getting discharged. There is no, no further chemo, radiation or surgery possible for this patient. And so they are abandoned by the medical fraternity and they uh, lie down in their home. And, but they, are, uh, they do have a lot of suffering. And so uh, we have to address that suffering. For the man who fell from the coconut tree and became paraplegic, when once these uh, people uh, climbing on the coconut tree, they sometimes fell down, fall down, and uh, they injure their spinal cord and they become paraplegic. They are all taken to the hospital. And when once the paraplegia is set, uh, no further treatment is uh, given in our usual hospitals. And they will be uh, sent back to their home, with their uh, uh, urinary catheter in situ, and uh, it is totally lost in the, in the lower limb. So these patients have a lot of physical, social, and psychological issues. They have to be addressed. So that is uh, their palliative care is needed. For the man with a major CVA, cerebrovascular accident, that is stroke, etc. When, when once they get paralyzed, they have a lot of uh, issues which is to be addressed. They are not usually addressed in the usual medical practice. Here comes the role of community. Because many of the problems in advanced disease are of a non-medical nature. And the community has a major role to play in addressing these problems. When we enlist all the problems of these veteran patients, uh, out of the 100 problems, the, uh, the doctor or nurse can only solve some 15 to 20 percent of the, these problems. The, the rest, 80 percent of the problem has to be addressed by the community. So community has a major role uh, in, in palliative care. And there comes the importance of home-based care also. Home-based care is the backbone of palliative care service. Because it is possible to manage patients with advanced disease at home. People doesn't know that. Everything, uh, think about major hospitals for uh, caring patients. But patients with advanced disease and long-term disease, they can be managed uh, in their own home. And people prefer to spend their last days at their own home. And home-based care is cost-effective as a, and a very important that important factor. Uh, issue because home-based care is cost-effective. It is less uh, expensive than treating from a hospital. Then complications are less in home, home-based care with empowered partnership for the community. Uh, people have a, a mistaken notion that infections, other complications are more in home. No, it's not like that. Infections are all uh, happen more in hospital than home. So uh, home is a very safe environment for uh, treating patients. Long term patient needs long term. Needs. Now, uh, the models of palliative care delivery. Actually, uh, in India, there was some hospices in Shanti Avedan Ashram uh, was uh, established in 1984 or so. And in the very next uh, two years, it opened another branch from Goa and Delhi. But such hospices where institutionalized treatment is given it did, did not take root in uh, our country because of two reasons. One is that it is very expensive. And do you know the need for palliative care? How many people need palliative care? A very uh, gross underestimated uh, number is that out of one lakh population, 400 people will need palliative care out of one lakh population. So 130 crore uh, population of India needs how many uh, palliative care centers, uh, how many uh, hospices should be there to uh, address the issues of these patients. So that's not possible. And another thing is that uh, our cultural ethos doesn't uh, allow people in their old age or uh, disability to, to put in a care home and come back. So uh, uh, 
model of political delivery suited for the uh, financial and uh, it, uh, emotional or cultural ethos of the uh, country uh, came in in 1994 in calicut and in calicut uh, dr m r rajawal was the uh, professor and head of department of financial sociology and he along with his one of his student uh, dr suresh kumar one of their common uh, social activist friend ashokan they started the first palliative care unit and they didn't go for uh, purchasing land and constructing building they utilized the existing infrastructure facility of the government hospital there there was a room which was not uh, intended for any particular uh, thing so they used that room uh, cleaned it uh, put a uh, table and chair and started examining patients who need palliative care that was the beginning and the, when when they started they realized that uh, a doctor alone cannot uh, perform, uh, cannot undertake all the patient needs so uh, they need uh, nursing staff and attendants and uh, at that time th there was no nurses uh, doing this uh, extra work so their volunteers volunteers came their uh, spouses and their friends came and uh, started helping them so the uh, second factor is that filling the gaps with volunteers in the community and they understood that most uh, many of the treatment can be undertaken from their own home provided we give them necessary guidance so empower the family and make it partnership with the patient and family so that was the uh, and then came the another model called nnpc neighborhood network in palliative care uh, those who are in kerala know everything about nnpc but uh, those uh, residing outside kerala may not be aware of such a <coughs> care model the, the idea is to empower the local community to look after the bedridden patients in their area to develop a cost effective method for the provision of palliative care in our settings we have a network of trained volunteers in the community with a support system by trained professionals and students and organizations that is called nnpc that is uh, that happened like this when uh, the calicut uh, people started their uh, outreach center in another district or malappuram district then the volunteers were taking active interest they started uh, identifying patients in need of palliative care and uh, they got the lead role in calicut model the professionals were the lead role and uh, volunteers were filling the gaps whereas in when, when it came to malappuram uh, the whole thing turned upside down the volunteers uh, led the program and they uh, in, uh, they took professionals to fill the gaps so the, 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 that way uh, it became a people's movement and this uh, journal of public health policy uh, said this community approach in palliative care 28 years alpha after alma ata shows the way forward for palliative care to palliative care for all if similar strategies uh, like uh, nnpc can be employed elsewhere that would be a very important step forward for global palliative care And then came the palliative care policy in kerala and that is uh, in 2008 there's a uh, partnership between the, the the policy envisages palliative care delivery as a partnership between community based organization local self government agencies and local government healthcare institution so uh, we have the uh, robust infrastructure of the government at the same time we can maintain the compassion and the volunteerism by uh, uniting it with uh, community based organization so it works well in kerala
and what is the role of volunteers and we are you, you are all going to uh, be volunteers uh, of uh, valetikar volunteers so uh, regular the role of volunteers is the regular continuous emotional support for the patients and their family these patients will be in a devastated uh, state a lot of uh, stress so continuous emotional support for the patient and family that can be given by volunteers and social support to the patient some people need uh, financial support some people need uh, support for their children's education some may need uh, financial support for purchasing medicines and uh, some people may uh, need assistance for uh, securing uh, government aids so a lot of uh, things can be done by the volunteers then wound care bed sore prevention etc some we, we have volunteers who regularly visit uh, the uh, the home uh, homes of the patients and uh, assist in wound care and bed sore prevention etc and spread the idea of palliative care in the society the vol volunteers can uh, by word um, Uh, by word, uh, by meeting other volunteers and other members of the society, they can spread the idea of palliative care. Then fight social stigma to cancer, AIDS, etc. There are a lot of uh, stigma uh, regarding cancer. Uh, some people fear that it, it may spread. So we have we can uh, uh, volunteers who are trained in these things. They can reassure the uh, the uh, family and other. as social members of society that is not going to uh, is not a contagious disease so uh, you not worry and organization and administration of uh, palliative care services when uh, people uh, the, the ordinary people uh, take the lead role of palliative care service in their community they, they there is lot of sustainability of the project because they are addressing a felt need of the community and community can uh, see the result of their work and they will uh, contribute uh, for the palliative care activity so organization and administration of palliative care services so these are the things uh, i wanted to uh, share with you any uh, doubts and any good clarification needed we can discuss thank you thank you sir for that information informative session uh, so any doubts uh, uh, jarappa srinivasan you can ask doubt now yeah ma'am uh, sir that we indeed was a great lecture sir sir um, uh, in the palliative care it's mostly comprising of the multidisciplinary care which is focused on improving the quality of life so the multidisciplinary care for the various other disorders like stroke as well as for the long term diseases so in what way palliative care is different from the multidisciplinary care sir because uh, yeah because the patient will be suffering in the various aspect like physically psychologically spiritually all that aspects uh, are taken by the different specialists but in what way the palliative care is different from the multidisciplinary care uh, there are uh... a lot of issues which has a non medical component in the, in the 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 whole suffering of the patient there are a lot of things which which are of non medical issues which are not addressed by uh, the specialists so they have to be they contribute to the suffering of the patient so uh, a neurologist will uh, take care of neurological problems a psychiatrist may address a psychiatric problem so uh, at, at the same time the patient will have a lot of social problem and spiritual problems so these things are not addressed and the, uh, the the total suffering of the patient we cannot isolate the physical social psychological and spiritual etc so these are all interlinked uh, so we have to have a comprehensive care program for this patient 
which, which is not possible in the multidisciplinary uh, clinical scenario. I think, is that clear? Uh, I still didn't get it, sir, because see, sir, uh, a multidisciplinary care is focusing on all the emotional aspects and all that. Can you explain in little in detail, sir, by giving one example? Okay. okay. We had a patient, a, a lady, a 45 year old lady with carcinoma cervix. And she was in severe pain. And we were giving her morphine every four hourly. We started with 5 milligram, then 10 milligram, 20 milligram, 40 milligram. Then the patient is not getting relief. And the home care team, when they visited the home, they realized that uh, they are living in a small building, which they started to build when she was healthy. But it, it uh, stopped halfway when she uh, took ill. So uh, now the uh, she and uh, her daughter, 18-year-old daughter, they were living alone. And uh, uh, her husband has left so many years back. Uh, no, no information about him. And uh, this uh, daughter is doing some sewing work. And with that meager income, they are just living. The, the problem is that the, they have made the house of, of, okay, but there is no door for the house. They couldn't uh, make a paka door for the house. They are just a, a stack uh, cloth and they cover the uh, uh, door with a sack cloth and then they, leave, leave, they sleep there. So she knows that her time is limited. And how she is going to live in this uh, unsafe place, that was worrying her. And so that worry was uh, the cause for the increasing pain, which doesn't respond to morphine. So when once the, the problem was uh, identified, uh, the Paletical volunteers gathered and with the help of students initiated in Paletical. Uh, in Kerala, there are a lot of students, college students uh, assisting in Paletical. So they created a pakka house for them. The, 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 do the door was fixed and they gave a very strong message that uh, there is a community around her who is willing and capable of protecting her daughter. And the uh, requirement of morphine came down and we could uh, manage her pain with paracetamol itself. So this is something which we cannot ever address in our uh, medical uh, hospitals. Okay, sir, got it. Mm -hmm. Sir, can you name a few more uh, problems which are we commonly encounter in the palliative care which are not addressed by the medical professionals? Yeah. A uh, lot of things. When you see uh, a, a patient who became paraplegic, and uh, when, when the patient was brought to the hospital, we rose to the occasion and we did everything possible for him. We catheterized him, him we gave analgesic for him, we took care of everything. And he uh, shifted to ward. Okay, now the spinal cord compression has caused a uh, paraplegia for the patient. In an average uh, hospital in India, no aggressive treatment is possible. Then what happens? After, say, uh, one, uh, one week or 10 days, the patient will be sent back home. And when this patient, a coconut climber, who uh, sustained their life with the income of coconut climbing, and he's laid up in the ho uh, home. Lot of problems. His, uh, uh, his uh, life partner has suddenly shifted to the role of a home nurse. His uh, income complete stopped. And uh, what about her, uh, their emotional life, uh, sexual life? They doesn't have any idea about how to uh, continue their se sexual life this, with uh, this uh, uh, catheter in situ, urinary catheter. So a lot of things uh, they, they need to be addressed. This thing, we, we, we think that 
when once we send the, the, them back home, uh, our purpose is finished. No, they need to continue their life and how to make the, that life livable. That is the problem. There comes the importance of palliative care. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Srinivasan. Any other doubts or anything, any comments you want to share? Uh, yeah, good answer. evening. Yes. Yeah. Good evening, ma'am. Uh, I have a question for doctor. Uh, sir, I would request to know what qualifies a uh, person for this uh, uh, being a palliative uh, care individual? Like uh, normally we all guys are working in different fields, not, a, not uh, having a medical background as such. So how does one qualify as such? So in Kerala, we have uh, palliative training at different levels. For doctors, we give uh, six weeks basic certificates in palliative medicine or 10 days hands-on training in palliative care. And there is a national level certificate course in essentials of palliative care, which is a three months duration. And we have uh, training for volunteers, volunteers in the community. Uh, what we do is that uh, uh, it's a 15 hours theory session and uh, one day clinical clinic visit and one day home care visit along with the uh, mother unit. And then uh, these patients will have an idea about uh, how to address the palliative care issues of the patients. And uh, that qualifies him to uh, become a palliative care volunteer. Uh, so just uh, to add to what sir said, like uh, basically speaking, I am also a non-medical person. So I am heading the virtual training part, which doesn't need any of the medical uh, like expertise to have a coordination in place, coordination of training in place. So like if you have a palliative cancer nearby, you can talk to those people and what as a volunteer, a non-medical person can do for that organization. Like in our organization, we do have many programs for our patients. We have rehab, uh, like support centers and all. So like being a coordinator for that, those programs or uh, like uh, helping them market their products, uh, whatever like our uh, field chair patients will be making some products. If we are able to market those products to people, that can be done by a non-medical person. And also like physical help. If, you, if, you, if the organization nearby needs a person to be lifted to the bed and all, so that we can do it, right? So such things, you can uh, contact a uh, palliative care center nearby. You can talk to them. You have a conversation with them and uh, like uh, make yourself aware about what can be done in that center and you can do the need for. So like Sir said, it's not about, it's not the medical people coming in place for palliative care. We work as a team. We also have an interdisciplinary team in which each individual has a role to play in palliative care. So the basic thing we can do is understand what as an individual you can contribute to palliative care and do the needful accordingly. Thank you, sir. Uh, you want to add anything, Dr. Rivakaran? Uh, okay. The, these things, are, a lot of things we can, uh, as volunteers, we can do. Uh, we can just uh, be a company for these patients. And just a uh, patient listener for the patients. Uh, they are all very valuable uh, when you reach such a stage in the, in the disease process. So there are, when once you start doing palliative care, you understand that there are a lot of things uh, we can do uh, for alleviating the suffering of these patients. We, we rehabilitate these patients by teaching them uh, Soap manufacturing, that that sort of things, the umbrella making, then LED bulbs making, then these things. The the paraplegic patients can utilize their uh, upper limb, so we can train them new traits and once again uh, make them earning members, which uh, uh, increase their self worth. A lot of things we can do. Understood, sir. Understood. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Harpreet. Uh, any questions? 
Uh, sir, for the healthcare professionals, for the physiotherapist, uh, are there any specialized courses, sir, in Pali in India? Yeah, yeah, yeah we, sure. we give uh, biological care training for physiotherapists also. Okay. Uh, which ones are the foundation course of palliative care? That one or? Uh... The foundation course. The foundation course. Okay, sir. Okay. Which is going to start from 3rd June. Is that the program, sir? Uh, that uh, is a program. Uh, that is a program from Pallium India. Uh, like we also have a specialized program for physiotherapists. The new program is not uh, scheduled yet. Once it is scheduled, we will let you know. Okay. Hi, sir. Uh, good evening. Uh, yes, Navi. Yeah, I have a question. How do you reach out to these volunteers in case we need their help? <clears throat> The usual sequence is that uh, a palliative unit, an established palliative unit, will uh, conduct awareness programs in local community. And uh, listening to the awareness program, uh, first of all, we had to uh, make friends with the uh, uh, local uh, community clubs and such things. And we deliver them a, a awareness class. And when the Awareness class is over. Some people will want to uh, give this uh, service for this purpose. So we uh, take them as volunteers and we give a structured training for these volunteers. And they then uh, conduct uh, political survey in their own surroundings. They identify uh, bedridden patients and uh, address, start address their problems with uh, other fellow volunteers and they, uh, their medical and nursing issues will be addressed by this training institute itself. And gradually, uh, uh, the local community will come up with their own doctors and uh, home care service, et cetera. And that, that, that way it goes. First of all, awareness program, then identify volunteers, you structure training for all and That's the sequence. Okay, so, so how many such communities are there and uh, are they available in all the districts in Kerala? Yeah, in all the districts in Kerala, there are uh, community programs and uh, government program also. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you, Nivet. Uh, any other questions? No, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, rest of the participants, any questions? Uh, Harpreet, you had a question? No, I guess. Uh, there is a question in the chat, chat box. What would you say? are some of the differences between palliative care and hospice. Okay. Uh, essentially, uh, hospice care was the initial one uh, for addressing the suffering of patient with uh, terminal illness. So in hospice, they restrict their service to patients who are terminally ill. Uh, typically, a hospice is a place where patients with limited life expectancy, say uh, six months or less, they are uh, taken care of. That's the hospice. Of course, there is the there's a philosophy of total care and all, the compassion, etc. There, but uh, in when you talk about palliative care, it is the addressing the suffering of the patients of any uh, category of patients. And they need not be terminally ill patients. They need not be. Uh, the, the life expectancy should not be limited. So palliative care is uh, whole person care addressing the serious health-related suffering of the patient. Whereas in hospice, it's a more of uh, towards the end of life. I think it's clear. Anushka, is that clear for you? Yes, okay. thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Anishka. 
Uh, I think, sir, we can see a short video and come back.